Good evening, everyone. What a blessing it is to be in the Lord's house on this Sunday evening. Amen. Looking forward to a good time of fellowship with you guys tonight, but most importantly, I'm looking to meet with the Lord tonight. Have my heart stirred by the preaching of his word. That's what we're here for. Um, if you have your bulletin, we'll go ahead and start off by looking at our precept that's on the front of our bulletin. It's found in first, second Samuel, excuse me, chapter number 22, verses 33 to 36. Right there, he's got half the book up here. The Bible says, God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great. And what those verses of Scripture right there are telling us in plain English is, like I say, we all know. We can tell by this year we've been fighting through a battle this year, amen? We've been going through a war every place we go. But it says, God is my strength and my power, and he maketh my way perfect. As long as we go through everything with him, we rely on him as our strength, and we rely on his salvation as our shield, we're going to be all right. No matter how we come out on the other side, everything's going to be good, as long as we have the Lord on our side. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, once again, it's good to be in here tonight. Um, we'll start off with a, a word of prayer, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we count it a privilege and an honor, Lord, to gather together into your house tonight, Lord. We thank you for all the brothers and sisters that have made their way out tonight, Lord. We pray, Father, Lord, that you will just bless us tonight, Lord, with your presence felt in this service tonight, Lord. Just speak to our hearts, Lord. Have the singing of your praises, Lord, before the message tonight, Lord. Just prepare our hearts to receive the preaching of your word, Lord. Help us all just... Um, Open our hearts and our minds, Lord, and just soak it in, Lord, so we can apply it to our lives over the coming days and weeks ahead to be the best possible service that we can for you and fulfill the will that you have for our lives, Lord. Lord, as we begin our service tonight, Lord, we want to bring the, uh, a few prayer requests, Lord, that have been um, made known, Lord, and we want to lay them at your feet in faith, Lord, knowing that's the greatest thing we can do for any of them, Lord. We pray for Sarah Bryant. We thank you, Lord, that she's home now. Continue to be with her and her health in every way. Be with her family. We pray for the family of Shirley Bledsoe, Lord, that you'll just be with them in their time of loss, Lord. Wrap your arms of love around them, Lord. We pray for um, all those on our list who are affected with COVID, Lord. We ask that you will just be with them. We pray for Kathy Cole, Tim Phillips, uh, Chad Godsey. David Needham, Ryland and Betty Yates, Lord, just touch their bodies, Lord, make them whole again, Lord, we pray, Lord, we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you'll just rid this world of that, that dreaded virus, Lord, so we won't have to utter those words or that name again, Lord, and we can return to our services as normal, Lord. We pray for um, Bonnie and Steve Rains. We pray for the Lewis family. Continue to be with them, Lord. We pray for the family of Charles Massey, Lord, that you'll be with them, Lord. Just make your love real to them at this time. We uplift Carol Tickle, the family of Les Young Sr. Um, just be with them in their time of loss. We pray for Emma Kinsey in the Children's Hospital in Greensville. We pray for um, Gail Jones' um, nephew and her grandson, Lord. You know the need there for Scott Barker, who's in the hospital. Be with Sandra Loftus, Lord, who's down at Duke in the ICU, Lord. Just reach down and touch her body and heal her, we pray. We ask that you be with Lenore Peterson, who's got a hemorrhage and some stroke. Um, we thank you, Lord, that I heard today, Lord, that she's doing better, Lord. Just help her um, condition to continue to improve. We ask that you be with uh, Joe Younger. My, for myself and Brother Gary Simons, we both have unspoken requests, Lord. You know the needs there, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would just work on our behalf, Lord. We pray for the family of Jan Janice Petit, uh, for Jimmy Clayton and his health. We pray for Robin Wright, who's recovering from surgery. And we pray for Brother Noah, Noah Fry, Lord, who, who fell and has got some, some bleeding and a, a hemorrhage on the brain, Lord. And they're going to do a procedure on him, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just be with the surgeon's hands, Lord. Just let the procedure go flawlessly for his health, Lord. Just help him to recover. 100% we pray, Lord. Now, Father, Lord, we ask once again, Lord, that you would just bless everything that we're going to do here tonight, Lord. Help us, Lord, as we uplift and magnify the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We pray, Father, Lord, that you'll just meet here with each and every heart in attendance, and it'll be a good time tonight in your uh, house, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. If I can find my bulletin once again. A couple of announcements. Um, of course, tonight is our, our candlelight service. Looking for a good time in the Lord tonight. Um, coming up this coming week, there'll be no Tuesday Bible study. Wednesday service will be going on as planned at 6 p.m. Um, BBI, of course, is off until next semester. If you're interested in signing up for the new semester, you can see me. I'll be glad to give you any information that you need to know about that. 
Uh, the most important thing I want to bring up tonight is um, next Sunday night, 6 p.m., the Kingdom Kids Christmas Play It All Happened in the Country will be here. I'm looking forward to that. We have a good number here in the Lord's House. I, I'd like to see twice as many out here next Sunday night. Support these kids and Miss Anita because they have poured a lot of work into this Christmas play. So let's come out here next week. It'll be a couple days after Christmas. We'll still be celebrating the birth of Jesus, and we'll, we'll honor the work that these young folks have done in Jesus' name. And with that, let's see what we got up here. Offering, Brother Ken? Sure. He knows this stuff a lot better than me. Hmm? You see a birthday. Oh, yeah, there is a birthday is. here. <laughs> she snuck in. I didn't notice her first. Robin, I noticed your 25th birthday this time. <laughs> So, okay, I'm being nice up here. I'm in the pulpit. I'd be nice to you up here. So, <laughs> Robin Shields did celebrate her birthday today. Just wanted to wish you a merry, a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to. She may not show up for another year now. <laughs> anyway, I uh, just want to remind you once again that today's offering, it all goes 100% towards our building fund and our, our, our new building campaign that we got going on. So if you, have your, uh, if you haven't done it yet, there's plenty of opportunities. You have the box in the back. You can put your checks and cash in. We also have a credit card machine back there. We can do it. We also have it online, strengthnumber4today.com. It's available there for you as well, and also by mail, P.O. Box 10004, Danville, Virginia, 24543. I'm going to go ahead and pray for the offering, and it looks like right after that, it's me again, I guess. Cool. So, all right, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kind of a new schedule that we got here today, so let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this privilege and opportunity to be here in your house. We just ask, God, that you would just um, bless the offering that we're going to receive this today. We just ask, God, that every penny will go to the building fund, to our campaign, and so that we may be able to go out uh, and have a new building built, more room, more opportunities, and just pray, God, that more souls come to Christ their Savior through it. We just ask, God, that you would just help us catch that vision that you have for us and enable us, Lord, just to be faithful to you. These things we all ask and thank in Christ's precious name. Amen. All right. Well, no further ado. I'll go, go ahead and get started. Welcome. This is our, I guess, our first ever uh, salt and light candlelight service. Where are the candles? If you find them, please let me know, because we can't find them either. So, but either way, <laughs> I think when we cleaned up the junk room, that was considered to be junk. So, oh well, we'll remember it for next time. Yeah, everybody's blaming the preacher, but I don't know. I just, I know that me and Tony both were in, not here, so that's all I know. So, but still, nevertheless, uh, this is our service that we want to introduce a little bit of our Salt and Light. Salt and Light Ministries is uh, a ministry that uh, myself and uh, Brother Tony, along with our better halves, uh, run. And uh, we're very thankful to have the opportunity to deal with um, these children. They're juniors and teens, 10 years old, 18 years old. We got some that still want to stay 18 and still want to keep going, so, but, <laughs> oh well, we just put them to work. That's how we usually handle them, so. but. Today we just wanted to um, make things a little bit different. Um, if there's anything that's going to be true about Christmas this year, it's going to be like none other. And it's going to be some unique things, it's going to be some not so great things. But if we just continue focusing on what the season's for, no matter what the scenario or the situation that we're in, we want to let you know that it's going to be okay. We're going to be good. We're going to have a great Christmas. Why? Because of what we're celebrating. We're not celebrating the turkey. We're not celebrating the ham. We're not celebrating the presents. We're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we got some uh, songs. We got some poetry that we want to read to y'all. And then if there's enough time left, I may have a couple of words. Hopefully they'll stretch it out to where I ain't got to say as much. But nevertheless, we'll see how that goes. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce our first person, is uh, br Brother Caleb Moore. He's going to open us up in a Christmas prayer. Let us pray. 
Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the announcement of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the lesson which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven for Jesus' sake. In his name, amen. Thank you, Brother Caleb. Thank you. Okay, the first song we're going to have is Miss Tori Underwood. She's going to be singing a um, hymn by, by a great comedian, but also a great songwriter. Uh, Mary, did you know? Probably one of my most favorite modern um, hymns of Christmas is Mary, Did You Know? Some of the uh, lyrics in that is profound. You know, when you kissed your baby, do you know you kissed the face of God? It's just amazing to think about. Uh, we have some poetry. Uh, he did not write this, just letting you know. So. Uh, Brother Jackson Snow, If I Am. If I am a king, my crown I will give to him. If I am a caroler, I will sing to him. 
the best hymns. If I am a shepherd, I'll best lamb I'll bring. If I am an angel, I give him my wing. If I am the wise man, I'll I give my wealth away. If I am a soldier, I'll die for him all the way. But I am just a poor little boy, with nothing much to give, but I, but to offer my little hands and my little feet, the glory, the glorify, the one in the neck, in the manger the, that was born, that hope and and light of the mixed up world. I'll give my heart to the one that was born to die, the and brings freedom to to all mankind. I am just a little bit I'm just a little boy today. I'll do bigger I'll do bigger things to him one day. I I give my life and all to to the one who calls me. Jesus Christ was born to set me free. And this is what Christmas means to me. I guess as an adult, sometimes Christmas loses its luster, but if we have the faith like a child, and if we look at Christmas like a child, I think we can really find what Christmas is really about. And we obviously, it's about celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. We do have some commandments that we need to do. And with that, I want to have Brother Dakota and Brother Patrick come tell you about the Ten Commandments of Christmas. The Ten Commandments of Christmas. Commandment number one, thou shalt not leave Christ out of Christmas by making it Xmas, because to some, X is an unknown. Colossians 1.18 says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Commandment two, thou shalt prepare thy soul for Christmas. Spend not so much on gifts that thy soul is forgotten. Psalms 63.8, my soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. Commandment three, thou shalt not let Santa Claus replace Christ, thus robbing the day of its spiritual reality. Exodus 23, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Commandment four, thou shalt not burden the shop girl, the mailman, and the merchant with complaints and demands. <laughs> Ephesians 4.32, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Commandment five, thou shalt give thyself with thy gift, this will increase its value a hundredfold, and he who receives it shall treasure it forever. Romans 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Commandment number six. Thou shalt not value gifts received by their cause. Even the least expensive may signify love, and that is more priceless than silver and gold. Mark 12:43, And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor window hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Verse 44, For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Commandment 7, Thou shalt not neglect needy, Share thy blessings with many who will go hungry and cold, unless thou art generous. Deuteronomy 15.8 But thou shalt open thine hand wide, uh, wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need, and that which he wanteth. Commandment 8 Thou shalt not neglect thy church. Its services highlight the true meaning of, of the season. Hebrews 10.25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. Commandment 9. Thou shalt be as a little child, not until thou hast become in spirit. As a little one art thou ready to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mark 10, 15. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Commandment 10. Thou shalt give thy heart to, to Christ. Let him be at the top of thy Christmas list. Joel 2.12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart.
Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate that. Well, the next person I wouldn't really call him a teenager. <laughs> I call him middle-aged, actually. <laughs> He's almost getting to that point of recycled teenager, actually. So, but nevertheless, uh, Brother Sean, he, he is definitely helps us tremendously uh, in our youth department, and I wanted to him to have the opportunity to sing. Well, of course, I really forced you, actually, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. He's going to actually sing the song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. on Christmas Day and their old familiar carols play and mild and sweet their songs repeat of peace on earth and goodwill to men and the bells are ringing Like a choir singing In my heart I'll hear them Peace on earth And goodwill to men And in despair I bowed my head There is no peace on earth I said for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth and goodwill to men. But the bells are ringing like a choir singing. Does anybody hear them? to man and then rang the bells more loud and deep God is not dead nor doth he sleep and the wrong shall fail the right prevail with peace on earth and good will Man. Then ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime. Of peace on earth and goodwill to men. And the bells they're ringing like a choir they're singing. And with our hearts we'll hear them. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. the bells they're ringing and the life the angel singing open up your hearts and hear them peace on earth and goodwill to men Thank you. 
my teenagers got some deep voices, don't they? So, <laughs> he's got just as much gray as I do, so that's not bad. So, I know. <laughs> Except this. Hey, I got him beat right here. Huh? I can. That's the reason why I'm not up here singing. Don't you worry about that. One of the things I think we all miss in our lives as we get older is the true meaning of Christmas. And um, we found a couple of poems and poetry that I really think uh, speak well to what the true meaning of Christmas is. We got two of them. Uh, the first one is called Christmas's True Meaning, and it'll be read by Dakota McBride. Oh, man. Christmas's True Meaning. Let Christmas's true meaning rise up in you today. May you see the real splendor of Jesus' birth on this day. May his beauty and grandeur cause your heart to sing. May the gift of his excellence become your eternal spring. May his majesty you behold with all dignity and honor. May the fullness of his truth glorify his heavenly Father. May the wonder of his grace reveal its magnificence in you. May the gratefulness you feel be in all you say and do. Let Christmas's true meaning bring your Savior near today. May you see the need for him today and every day. And now we have um, the meaning of Christmas, and I'll be read by our toughest one that we have, Whitney Tickle. <laughs> Far away in Bethlehem, a baby boy was born, born with neither riches nor fame, yet wise men came from all around to bring him their gifts. And peace was felt by all who heard his name. Angels watched as he slept and gently rocked his bed, their voices singing softly in his ear. His mother and father both gave thanks to God above for the greatest gift of all, their son so dear. They knew his life upon earth would not be filled with wealth. They also knew he would encounter strife. But most of all, they knew that he would be a loving child and teach the love of God throughout his life. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Let's keep in mind the truth of Christmas Day, for it's not Christmas wrappings, nor the gifts lie within, but a, a gift of love to others in every way. Excellent job. Maybe we remember this year, the probably the most weirdest Christmas ever that we'll remember the real reign of Christmas, Jesus Christ. We next have a song, once again, not a teen, but almost. And I'm kind of partial to this one. Uh, this is Katie, and she's going to sing a song, Messiah. Messiah, Messiah, a baby. 
I wonder where she got that voice from, just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I better look around because I'm sure they want me, so. <laughs> Nevertheless. Um, oh, I thought I heard something. Anyway, um, what we got next is we got the alphabet. As a young age, you need to learn your ABCs. This is not the same thing, but it's close enough. I do have three gentlemen who could come up here and do this. We have uh, Manny Graham. Stanford Wells and also Colton Wells. They're going to be going over the Christmas alphabet, starting hopefully with the letter A, right? Y'all know the alphabet. You know which order you yeah. got, right? Okay, I, I, I got it. I got it. Make it true. Thanks. Whew. Um, I'm mad because every single time I'm on camera, my hair looks a mess. But this is a Christmas alphabet poem, and I hope that you guys are blessed. A is for angels appearing so bright telling of Jesus the first Christmas night. B is for Bethlehem, crowded and old, birthplace of Jesus, my prophet foretold. C is for cattle, their manger his bed, there in the trough where he laid his head. D is for David, his ancient throne, promised forever to Jesus alone. E is for East, where shone the bright star with magi on camel, followed afar. F is for frankincense with myrrh and gold, brought by the wise men as Matthew has told. G is for God, who from heaven above sent, to, sent down to mankind the son of his love. H is for Herod, whose murderous scheme was told to Joseph in a nocturnal dream. I is for Emmanuel, God with us, for Christ brought man back to the Father's house. J is for Joseph, so noble and just, obeying God's word with an absolute trust. K is for king, a true king he would be, coming in power and authority. L is for love that he brought down to earth, God enfleshed in lowly birth. M is for Mary, his, brother so, his mother so brave, counting God faithful and mighty to save. N is for night when the Savior was born, for nations of, of earth and people forlorn. O is for Omega, meaning the last, He's eternal, present, future, and past. P is for prophets when living on earth, foretold his redemption and blessed birth. Q is for quickly, as shepherds who heard, hastened to act on that heavenly word. R is for rejoice. The sorrow of sin is banished forever when Jesus comes in. All right. Um, S is for Savior. To be this he came. The angel of God assigned him his name. T is for tidings of joy, not of danger, telling, him, uh, telling of him who was laid in the manger. He was for us, to whom Jesus was given, <sighs> to show us the way and take us to heaven. B is for virgin, foretold by this age, uh, God's revelation on prophecy's page. W is for wonderful, his works and his words, the king of all kings and lord of all lords. X is for Christ, is X in the Greek, anointed Messiah, mighty yet meek. Y is for yes, called God's yes, yeah, yes in his word. Uh, God's answer to all is Jesus the Lord. Z is for, how do you, how do you pronounce it? Zeal? It's uh, zeal? Is it? <laughs> As it burned in, uh, in Christ's heart, Lord by the Spirit to us, zeal impart. What does that mean? Don't worry about that, Colton. You wouldn't believe some of the things I've heard some of the people say up here. I, what was it? I know it is. It is. <laughs> Don't get used to it. So just. 
<laughs> um, ask Essen what inquiety is. Inquinity, that's right, inquinity. Ask him what that is. It's actually iniquity, so. That was actually uh, most of our salt and light. We got some of them that um, we didn't participate and they were actually in here with us. Um, couldn't get all of them in. Uh, some are actually home being quarantined. They've not been naughty. It's just they've been around people that have been infected. So this was a kind of impromptu. Some Muslims, most of my singers are actually being quarantined right now. So we just want to give them a shout out and tell them that we miss you. Uh, we love you, and we're looking forward to you coming back with us right after Christmas. One of the things that, um, when we look in the New Testament about the, the, in the Gospels, it tells the story of Jesus. But it was some of the verses of the Old Testament that actually told us about a Redeemer in the first time. I think sometimes those verses sometimes get missed in, when it comes to the story of Christmas. And one of them um, in the book of Isaiah is one of the most profound verses that we have about the promise of a redeemer. It says in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, it says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Those five names were given to Jesus here in the book of Isaiah, and all five names are fulfilled fully in him, being wonderful, being our counselor, being our mighty God, our everlasting Father, and also our Prince of Peace. And actually, this message is titled, Five Things Christ Wants to Be This Christmas. Of the five things I just mentioned, every one of them he wants to be to us this Christmas. Because if you look at that verse, it says, for unto us a child is born. He came here for us, every one of us. And that's what we got to understand when it comes to Christmas. He was our gift to us. And all five of these names and descriptions are met in him. The first thing we talked about was wonderful. He is wonderful. He is, should be the wonder of our Christmas. He should be the wonder of our joy. Everything about him should be the primary focus of what we talk about and what we do this Christmas year. Many people don't enjoy Christmas for whatever reasons. Maybe a few gifts, maybe some family troubles, maybe some fears. All of those things could probably couple up together in some way our Christmases this year, but that doesn't mean it can't be wonderful because of who makes it wonderful. Now, I'm going to brag a little bit on, on my wife. She don't even know it yet. So, What makes marriage wonderful? What makes a marriage wonderful? A Not a child. <laughs> Just, I can promise you that. That's what makes, uh, never mind. So. <laughs> what makes a marriage to a man and woman wonderful? Is it the gifts that you got? Is it your um, honeymoon? No, it's the person. Because all those things are temporary. It's going to be the person that makes it wonderful. And that's the reason why we got to understand what makes our salvation wonderful is Christ Jesus. Don't waste time looking for the wonder of Christmas in a department store. You're not going to find it. You're not going to find it on Amazon. I just look. It ain't there. Trust me. But the true wonder of Christmas can only be found in Christ Jesus. What makes Christmas really wonderful is actually a person. That's what we got to understand, that he would actually step down and come from heaven just to be like us, to live like us, to suffer like us, and to die like us. That's what's wonderful. He died for us, and now he's living in me. That's the wonder of Christmas. That's how he can become wonderful. Let him come inside of your heart. Let him be the light within you. Let him be what controls you totally. Now, this is something I enjoy doing. A lot of times when you go to your, especially your grandparents' house or your aunt's house, you get a lot of good food. Amen. You get a lot of great food. 
It's an, it's a wonderful time of year. And some of the things we think about, some of the actual special foods and, and the dishes that they're going to bring. But just like a meal, you cannot say that meal, that meal is actually wonderful until you've tasted it. Right. You can smell it. It may smell good. It may look good. But you're not going to know if it's wonderful until it touches the palate of your mouth. That's when you know it's wonderful. Christ is the same way. Until you have tasted how good he is, you're not going to understand it until then. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. That's where we need to be. We need to understand that this Christmas, Christ needs to be wonderful to us. But he also needs to be a counselor. Usually when you think of a counselor, it's kind of a bad thing. You know, a guidance counselor, they're going to tell you what you're going to do with the rest of your life. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, much less the rest of my life. So that's what you think about. But actually, a counselor is someone you talk to, a friend. He wants to be your friend. That's what we got to understand. He can be your best friend, the one that you can lean on. And I can, can you honestly say that Jesus Christ is your counselor, the one that you actually trust for wisdom, guidance, and direction? Because if you don't have him as your counselor to give you wisdom, guidance, and direction, you have no wisdom, guidance, or direction. That's what you got to understand. we got to make this Christmas him to be our counselor, our best friend. Christmas is very sad when it's not shared with someone. I think you realize that. And what a, what a wonderful Christmas to be spending with the person that the reason Christmas is for, Christ. It's, I've always never could understand the biggest birthday party all year long, and we never invite the person's birth, whose birthday it is. Why is that? That's what we've got to understand. He's got to become our counselor. The Lord Jesus wishes more than anything than to be the one whom we share the joys of the season because he is the reason for the joy of the season that we lean on through every trial, our best friend. We need not to leave Jesus Christ out of our Christmas. Let him be your counselor this week. Let him be the one that you talk to, who leads you, guides you, and gives you the wisdom that you need to do the everyday things that we're going to go through. So we talked about wonderful, we talked about counselor. We also have the mighty God. That's one of my favorite ones. Strength, a refuge, someone you can trust. He is our mighty God. So what's Jesus Christ to you? Was he a good man who lived a long time ago? Was he the reason that we have Christmas? Or is he your mighty God? There's a big difference in that. Where we place him at in our hearts is going to be what makes the difference about what Christmas is going to mean to us this year. Let him be your mighty God, because that's what he is. Christ Jesus not, wants so much to not be just that sweet baby in the manger, which is a great story. But the story doesn't end there. There's more to that story. Actually, uh, the wise men weren't even there the day he was born. So, but the Christmas story itself, that's what it's talking about, what talks about the wise men. So he's actually the one who fights our battles. He provides strong refuge for us in time of trouble. He is our mighty God. He is going to be the one who protects us, sustains us. He's going to be the one to answer us all the promises that we need. And he's going to be the one that we can place all of our trust into. So he is our mighty God. Also, he needs to be our everlasting father, like it says in the book of Isaiah. The one who will never let you down. The one who wishes to be what no earthly father could ever be. Always being there for you. Always working out things for your best. Not just for your convenience, but always giving his best for us. I've always tried to be there for my child, but sometimes I couldn't. Physical separation may not be there. For, my, for, the, for the youth group the same way. I always can't be there, but I know God can. Why? Because he's our everlasting father. He has no beginning. He has no ending. He's everlasting. And that's what we've got to understand. So this year, for this Christmas, he needs to be our everlasting father. Finally, the fifth thing, he needs to be our prince of peace. We've mentioned it a little bit in some of the poems and some of the singing. He needs to be our savior. He needs to be the one that we place all of our faith in. Because without that, we're not really going to understand the true meaning of Christmas without salvation. 
Notice that Christ was actually born unto us. We needed him. Without him, there is no salvation. Without him, there is no path to heaven. Without him, there is no redemption. That's what we got to understand. So this Christmas, he needs to be our Prince of Peace. We need him. Someone who can reconcile God and the sinner to make us real peace. There is no peace on earth, like it says, but there can be peace on earth through Christ. That's the peace that we need to focus on. Christ, the Lamb of God, coming to earth to pay my sin debt, dying a cruel death on the cross in my stead, making peace by his blood on the cross when we couldn't do it. Christ now waits for us to repent of our sins and receive the greatest gift ever, eternal life in Jesus Christ. Without Christ in your heart, you're never going to fully feel what Christmas is. And then he can become wonderful. He can become your counselor. He can become your mighty God. And he can become your everlasting father if he becomes your prince of peace. Tonight, the best way to celebrate Christmas and the best gift that you could ever give Christ is you. If you haven't given your heart to Christ, tonight's a great night. If you haven't given, surrendered your whole life to him, you may have given your heart to him, but does he have everything else? Tonight's a good night to give that to. No matter what, there's something we can give Christ. And there's no better gift than what he would rather have than ourselves. Let's bow our heads. The greatest gift ever given was given 2,000 years ago when Emmanuel came, God with us. Tonight, I don't know the hearts of everyone here, but I do ask if anyone here is just not sure about their salvation, has some doubts, have second thoughts about it, tonight's a great night to take care of that. Because it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tonight, where you're sitting right now, you can have just a simple prayer. Just whisper it to God, and if you mean it from your heart, he will save you. You can say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. I ask you to come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died and paid the price for my sins at Calvary. And right now, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. The best I know how right now, I repent and turn to you. Please save me. In Jesus' name I pray. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you were the first time ever, you ever said that prayer. God's rejoicing. We, we want to rejoice as well. If you did say it the first time, I just ask if you would just raise up your hand, wave it to God so everyone can see. Any of you watching online, if you did say that prayer, I ask that you go to our contact page at strengthnumber40day.com and just pray that you would just send us a line to let us know what you, how you accepted Christ. Brother Jamie's going to be playing a song. We can't do a regular invitation because of COVID. But I just want you to think about and just reflect what's Jesus going to mean to you this Christmas? Does he need to be your Prince of Peace, your everlasting Father, the mighty God, your Counselor? Oh, wonderful. Can't find 
All God's people said? Amen. Well, if no one else tells you this, I want everyone here to have a very, very Merry Christmas. If I did not see you Wednesday, I hope to wish you the best. I have a ham waiting out in my car I did not expect. I'm really glad to see that. So um, we'll have something unique to eat, I guess. So it'll be good. Um, once again, reminding you that the only thing we have going on here at church this week is going to be our Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. So um, that's all we have. But other than that, I wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, and I hope to see you back here Sunday. Also, I want to remind you about our um, drive that we're doing today. This is the last time that we're going to be having our end of the year uh, offering that goes 100% towards our building fund. So make sure that you can uh, give Jesus a good gift this year because he's been definitely good through us through everything we've gone through. He doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to ask Brother Stanford to come up here and dismiss us in prayer. Um, dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to gather here and um, just praise you. And um, thank you for all that we talked about tonight and the true meaning of Christmas. Please let us just apply that to our hearts and um, just, be, just show love to one another this season. Um, just thank you for all that you've done for us and continue to, uh, uh, and thank you for your continued blessings of this church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Yeah.